Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the PJ of American Ryder Cup Europe, I'd like to welcome everyone joining us remotely and those of here with us on site at Whistling Straits to the 43rd Ryder Cup here in Wisconsin. We are very pleased to be joined by our two esteemed captains. Uh, on my left, Steve Stricker from the United States, and on my right, European Captain Padring Harrington. Uh, gentlemen, both of you, thanks so much for not only being with us today, but all week. We understand it's a busy, busy time, and uh, we're grateful for all of your thoughts and insights. Uh, Captain Harrington, we will begin with you. Um, as we gather here on the, the, the shores of Lake Michigan, a year later than intended, what, what are your prevailing, uh, what's your prevailing mindset for your team um, and the journey to get here? Yeah, obviously to get here, it's it's been three years. Uh, but now that we're here, it seems like it's come around quick. Certainly the end of the journey has been quick. Uh, we traveled today and got here. Seems to be a great atmosphere amongst the lads. Uh, very happy with the work that the European Tour has done behind the scenes, getting uh, our team room was brilliant back at the at the hotel and here as well. We've we've changed. We've really moved a lot around in the Champions locker room. We're just very comfortable. It looks great. So they've done a great job with that. Uh, I couldn't be happier. We're ready to go. Uh, we've got a few videos that they've they've made. Uh, so the guys will see that this evening and start seeing some of those. So really. Uh, we're in a position that we're ready at this stage. Obviously, there's going to be plenty of unknowns during the week, but at this stage, we have prepared for everything and uh, ready to go. Captain Stricker, this is a home Ryder Cup for the first time in five years for the United States, but it's quite literally a home Ryder Cup for you being a, a native of Wisconsin. How, how excited are you to showcase your home state um, and have it be the backdrop for the greatest event in golf? Yeah. Um, yeah, very excited, very proud and humbled to be here representing Team USA. Welcome, Padraig, to Wisconsin. Um, we got to get you a cheese head, I think. Have you ever seen those? A cheese head? I have head? seen a cheese head. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm very comfortable <laughs> with the Green Bay Packers. All right. Um, no, seriously, though, it's it's been a long time coming. Uh, the fans are chomping at the bit to get out here, I'm sure. Uh, Wisconsin. Fans love uh, sporting events, uh, and, and you know golf is a big part of Wisconsin as well. You know we're we're at the home of uh, basically uh, Herb Kohler and his family, and and um, the the family that really uh, got golf put on the map here in Wisconsin. So it's uh, we're showcasing everything right here in, in our great state. So they've uh, they're looking forward to it, and we can't wait to to get the ball rolling on Friday. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, it's uh, it's been an unbelievable journey. Um, you know, you know, you 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 think back to childhood golf at those two courses you talked about, and uh, just um, you know, all the years playing on tour, and you know, I personally never thought I'd be in this position to captain the Ryder Cup team, and um, but again, very honored and and uh, happy, and uh, you know, it's a great. It's a great uh, position, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's fun to be a part of it. Um, again, very honored and humbled to be doing it. But yeah, you know, you you just look back at all the things that have taken place throughout my career, and and uh, this was not on my radar for sure. So, uh, extremely happy to be a part of it, and and um, we look forward to it for sure. I let you go first. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we've got. Um, some young guys on the team. I think I saw a stat earlier that we're about, on average, five years younger than the European team. Um, the one good thing is we come with a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of uh, energy, uh, young guys willing and, and ready to learn. Um, no bad experiences for the most part for, from a lot of these guys. You know, we haven't been on the winning side of things uh, too many times. I think only three out of 12 times of, of, out of the last 12 times. So. Um, you know, do, we, we, we're not coming with uh, bad experiences. So I think I see that as a positive. We're using that as a positive, and, and our guys are super fired up and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Europe has a strong team when it comes to experience. I think that's quite relevant when you're playing an away match. Uh, you know, if you had two players who won experienced them, um, um, one not of equal ability. Certainly, with an away match, you'd be looking for experience. 
so yeah, I, I'm very comfortable that my team is that experience. It will be interesting, as I said, at the end of the week, I'm sure the experience versus the, the non-experience will be trashed out many times to determine what the result was, but uh, certainly it's, you know, it's pretty tried and tested in Europe that we're going to go with experience when we're coming across here. Uh, we do have a few rookies in the team to provide that enthusiasm, but uh, yeah, we're, we're strongly relying on experience. <laughs> Clearly we have a game plan, uh, pretty strong game plan all the way through, well prepared. But from being a vice captain, I know that these things, you know, there's unknowns, things change uh, as you go on in the week. So you, you, tr you do everything you can to have a set program ahead. Uh, and then you also have that, certainly that vice captain's ready for when something happens, something changes so that you, you can move quickly, uh, not, not be acting retrospectively that, you, you know, even though we don't know what's gonna happen, you still have an idea of, if, you know, if X, Y, or Z comes along, well, okay, we can, we can pivot this way. So, yeah, we've got plenty of options, and that's the main thing. But as I said, if everything went smoothly, which very rarely does, you know, you, you could probably set, it, set out everything now. But as I said, we will expect some unknowns and some things to happen uh, that will need to be dealt with. Well, it's, it's pretty clear... We've seen good captains lose. We've seen bad captains win. Uh, but ultimately, the captain does have an influence if it's a tight game. And, that, and that's really it. If, if it is going to be a tight game, which a lot of these are, uh, the captain and, his, and, and the atmosphere he brings to his team can be the difference. So, yeah, it, it's one of those things for us that it sometimes, if, sometimes and many times, the captain will, will not be the actual difference but it's possible that we could be the very difference. Uh, we could make that difference at the end of the week. So we, we have to prepare like, you know, we're the ones that are going to make a little bit of a difference that gets, gets our team across the line. This, it's, it's a non-issue really for me and the team. Um, we got together a few weeks ago, the six of us. I've had conversations with them both. Uh, they've assured me that it's not going to be an issue. Um, yeah, so I have no worries whatsoever. Uh, will we pair them together? Uh, I don't think so at this point, but things could change. It could always happen, but, you know, probably not. But, uh, again, uh, I had a dinner. They all showed up. We had great conversation, great talks. Um, so I, I really i am not seeing it as an issue at all, and they're, they're completely on board. I was brought up playing foursomes. I played it a lot as a, a, an amateur golf Many of my team have, uh, so yeah, it's it's not really alien to us. Uh, it's certainly somewhere that I don't think we re because it's not so alien to us. We don't read that much into it. Uh, I think sometimes when people haven't played it, they they can overcomplicate it. Uh, but it's as I said, I was brought up playing it. It's, pl it's actually played in our golf clubs at home, not just in, in championships. So uh, yeah, it's just a very common game, and uh, really don't read into it any, any more than there should be. And I think sometimes you guys, again, might look at it and try and, it's just two guys playing a golf ball around the place. It's not, not, that, not that difficult when you're brought up playing it. He certainly can. Uh, you know, uh, the reason players want to play with him is they, they, he's not just a good player. They like the enthusiasm that he brings to the golf course. I think all us older guys look at Victor and we, we see the the youthful exuberance that we once had. And, uh, you know, I think that's why he's such an attractive partner for, for anybody in the team, uh, for foursomes or four balls. So Victor brings a lot of options during the week, that's for sure. Uh, clearly, these are the best caddies in the world. Uh, why would we be telling them what to do? They know their job. Uh, it is a difficult week for the caddies. There's a physical requirement. Uh, if they go 36 holes a day, uh, they need to st stay very mentally sharp. So yeah, it's, it's a different week for them, uh, that's for sure. And there's no doubt that in many ways, they're, they're, it's a, nearly a thankless job. They'd be forgotten about at times, but they really do, they really pull their weight when it comes to tournament golf, but no more so than at the Ryder Cup. Seve. Ten players. Pretty Seve. straightforward, Seve. It started with Seve in the 80s. Uh, he pushed for this to become a, 
a continent of Europe rather than a Great Britain and Ireland, and it was a way uh, for SEVI to legitimize the European tour. It was a way to give the European tour a standing. Uh, the great players in Europe at the time didn't get access to play uh, in all the best events in the world. SEVI was always was fighting against that, the tide in that, and playing and winning in the Ryder Cup was a way to say that Europe deserved a seat at the table. And uh, you know, you look at the great players we had in the 80s and, and it came, a lot came from Seve and those players uh, to drive Europe into a, a, a much stronger position in world golf. And uh, you know, without a doubt we rely on Seve for that. We have a, you know, we're here to play for, very much play for the European Tour. I, when, when I'm playing in Europe at the moment, you know, the last couple of weeks, South African players, Australian players, and, and Asian players who play in our tour come up to me and you know, wish me luck or, or rooting for us because they know it's a big part of our tour, how we do in the Ryder Cup. We don't get to choose that. You know, it's, it's a good question, but why would, why would we bother think like that? We don't get to choose what we're going to be going into Sunday. We've got to play as hard as we can Friday, Saturday, and, and see where we're at. Uh, you know, if, if I'm going to start you know, dreaming and, and, and predicting and, and wanting, sure, you know, there's plenty of other things we could look for in life, you know. I, I think I'd go for having a half a dozen shots lead rather than go for even. What, what do you think? I think you'd do the same. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if either one of us would like to have even going into Sunday. I think we're both looking a little bit uh, more of having a lead going into Sunday, and I, I, I'm sure he's thinking the same way. I know we are as a team thinking of having a lead going into Sunday, so... Uh, we're both trying to prepare that way. We're both trying to get to that point so we have a lead going into Sunday for sure. Yeah, it, every time uh, you play at home or uh, you realize you're going to have a home course, a home field advantage basically with, when it comes to the, uh, the fans. So, you know, you just go out and embrace it. Um, you know, let them energize you. Let them pick you up. Um, yeah, so almost show off for them, right? It, it seems like our teams over the years, the teams that have played well, uh, they get to the point of almost like they show off for the home fans, you know, and and uh, hopefully that's what our guys are going to do this week and provide a lot of excitement. And like I said before, I know the, the state of Wisconsin, and I said this the other maybe a week or two ago, I understand there's uh, ticket holders from every state in our country, 50, 50 states in our country that are going to be here. So... It's not just Wisconsin, but, um, you know, the whole country is showing up. It's been a long time waiting, and uh, everybody's excited to get this thing going. Uh, from our perspective, uh, our players play for the glory of, of this event. Uh, if there was 40,000 U.S. fans and no Europeans, we'd prefer that than having no fans. Uh, that's just the reality. We, w we want the noise. We want the excitement. We want... Uh, the buzz of it all. Yes, the players will have to deal with it. Yes, they have to embrace it, uh, but they wouldn't want the alternative. Having no fans is no fun. So, uh, you know, they're going to enjoy it. Uh, and, you know, we expect a loud crowd. We expect excitement. And, uh, you know, the players should be well prepared for it. And uh, it's not like they haven't seen it before. Uh, and after all, it is only golf. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty, you know, they're pretty safe inside the ropes. I don't think they need to worry about too much.